If you're wanting to record with a VHS, Hi-8, or Mini DV camcorder, and you don't want to run a tape in it, well, then I have the perfect solution here for you. Hey there, welcome back to my camera collection. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how you can go tapeless using the ClearClick Video to Digital 3.0. I'll be showing you everything that you'll need, and then I will show you how you set it up. I will show you how you set it up with AV cables, and I will explain how you do it with S video. With that being said, let's get into today's video. So today I'm using the Panasonic PV420 to demonstrate how we're going to do this. Uh, this is one of the only cameras I have that actually uh, uses the full red, white, and yellow uh, AV cables. Other ones take the 301 style, so one side's a headphone jack looking, and the other side is the uh, the the three prong. So if you have one of these cameras or something similar to this, uh, I will leave a link in the description for uh, a compatible battery if you need one for your camera. What do I mean by going tapeless? Well, the way that this works is, let's say you have uh, a camera that has a broken tape deck or it won't read tapes or it's, uh, it won't eject a tape or something like that. The clear click video converter acts as a monitor and a recorder. So pretty much what you can do is you can attach it to your camera and then have it plugged in through your AV cables or S video cables, put a USB drive in or a micro SD card in and you can push record on this rather than push record on your camcorder and it will record whatever the camcorder sees. So it's a nifty little thing and you don't even have to put a tape in the camera. Another thing that it's great for is you don't have to digitize your footage after you've finished recording. Generally, if you use this for digitizing your footage, you film your footage on your tape, then you take it home or wherever you're at, and you hook this device up, you rewind your tape back, and then you record your footage in real time that way. When you do it tapeless, you hit record on the recorder, rather than the camera, it's pretty much like recording onto a digital camera, say like a Canon M50 or a modern uh, camcorder. As soon as you're done recording, it's saved to the SD card or the thumb drive, then you just pop it in your computer and there you go. So it makes it a lot faster to do. So the components that you're gonna need here, well, you're gonna need a working camera. Next, you're going to need the Clear Click Video Converter 3.0 or something similar along the lines of this. Another thing you'll need is a micro SD card. Um, you can use a USB drive, but it's uh, you know it sticks out two inches or so on top of it and kind of just makes it even more bulky than it is. So I recommend using a micro SD card. Next, you will need your AV cables. Depending on what camera you're using, uh, I'm using an old VHS camera, so it takes a mono version of these, a yellow and a white. Some cameras will be um, a three to one, so one side will be this kind and then the other side will be a uh, headphone jack looking. Or you might be using S-Video, which I'll explain a little bit later. And then a cell phone holder for like a tripod mount. So something to put your cell phone in and mount it to a tripod. This is a, a real cheesy one I have. Um, I'll leave a link to a much better one that is actually swivelable and pivotable and move, moves around and stuff. These are the things that you're going to need. One other thing that you'll have to have if you want to mount this to your camera itself is a cold shoe mount. Now, if your camera doesn't have a cold shoe and it's a smaller compact camcorder, you can always order yourself a filming handle. Um, I'll leave a link to uh, an aluminum Movo brand one in the description. I personally have it and I like it. And I think it works great for being able to uh, kind of tidy up your cables and, and stuff like that. So let's get to mounting this and I will show you the steps on how you do it. Okay, so first things first, you gotta find a way to mount this to your camera. So that's where your little phone tripod holder thing comes in. It actually works great for mounting your converter to your camera. Just go ahead and put it in there just like it would be like your phone. And then now you can see that it is holding it. And then the little part that you have down here on the bottom, the, the cold shoe mount, you'll go ahead and slide it onto your cold shoe and tighten it down. Okay, and then now you can see you got yourself a monitor on there. So now you need to have, this thing's really bulky. <laughs> now you gotta have a way to uh, see a video signal, which is where your AV cables come in. So for this camera, this camera it has a uh, mono audio, so I'm only gonna be plugging the yellow and the white cable in. So obviously you plug the white in the white and the yellow in the yellow. 
And I'm gonna go ahead and plug the red one in just to make it so it's not so dangly. And then if your camera has a handle, say like a, a top handle like this, or if you're using like a filming handle, you can kind of wrap it around the backside, the, the cables around the backside of it. But I'm gonna go ahead and go through here just to tidy it up just a little bit. Then once you have it all wrapped up how you want it, I kind of wrapped it around the, the front portion of it here. You gotta leave a little bit of slack so you can reach uh, wherever your video out ports are, which on this camera, it's on the back, and you'll just go ahead and plug in where they would go. And I'm just gonna take this guy, and I'm gonna just kind of wrap it around here just to kind of get it out of the way. Super simple, you're already ready to go. So once you're ready, um, and you have everything all hooked up and ready to go, go ahead and turn your camera on, and you'll go ahead and turn your Clear Click Video Converter 3.0 on. And now is the time. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put my micro SD card in the converter. If you don't have yours already in it, uh, go ahead and do that now. Once you have your storage device in there, you can now see that there is a picture on the screen. Voila, nice and simple. So now all you have to do is instead of pushing record on the camera itself, you'll push record on the device or your uh, video converter. Now, depending on uh, your camera, um, you might need to go into the settings of your camera and uh, turn the uh, the time, time out option off, meaning that uh, a lot of cameras, they will have a time limit and then if you're not using it, it'll just turn off. So technically you're not using anything on the camera like pushing record or anything like that. So you'll have to go in and turn the uh, time out I don't remember what it's called but yeah the the timeout option so that way it'll just stay on for as long as you want and it won't turn off by itself while you're recording with the clear click on I'll go ahead and get some footage with this and kind of show you what it looks like note that this is a VHS camera and uh, not like a mini DV camera mini DV camera the video footage isn't gonna look amazing the clear click video to digital 3.0 is awesome for recording tapeless. So you're now watching me on the Panasonic PV42. It's a lot different looking, uh, that's for sure. <laughs> I have the converter, I flipped it backwards so that I can see myself because the Panasonic PV42 doesn't have an LCD screen, it's just a viewfinder. VHS cameras are super fun to film with, I love them. They're, they're probably some of my favorites, they're just the hardest to find uh, batteries and uh, power supplies for. So. Yeah, this is probably one of my favorite cameras that I own. This is the Panasonic PV42 with a tapeless system on it. Okay, for S video, I had to kind of <laughs> rig this up. The Canon GL1 is not the best camera to use for going tapeless. It's just, it's a smaller camcorder. So just trying to wrap cables and stuff around it is a little bit more of a hassle. So if you can go online and find shorter cables, like a foot and a half long or something like that, it'll help. It'll save you a lot of mess in the long run. This is a very rough uh, <laughs> go about about this. So th I know it's not pretty, but I'm just trying to explain how you do this. So don't mind my cable mess. If you want to do S video for your high A digital A camcorder or your mini DV camcorder, S video is always going to give you a better image than your AV cables. That being said, S video doesn't have audio in it. It's only video. So you have to run two cables for it to actually work. This is where it makes it a big jumbled mess and messy. The ClearClick 3.0 comes with uh, audio cables that is just your red and your white. And then the other side is like a headphone jack. When you go to set this up, you want to go ahead and plug in your S video. Once you have it all mounted and you're ready to go, plug your S video into the S video port on your camera. If I can do it, sometimes it's a pain. And then the headphone jack side, you will plug into the AV out on your camcorder, which is usually the little yellow port that you see here. Since it's AV, that means audio video, so that is where you will get your audio from. So go ahead and plug it into there. So now that you have it hooked into your camera, now just run your cables to your converter in the same way that you did. Plug the S video into the S video, and then the white and red, you will plug into your AV ports up on top, and you're ready to go. So go ahead and turn your camera on. I need to put my battery in. Go ahead and turn your camera on and your clear click converter. So once you have your clear click converter on, you're gonna wanna go into the menu and choose the video source from AV to S video, since your S video is what you're using for your uh, uh, video source. If you have uh, AV selected, it won't. It'll just come up as a blue screen. 
and you won't get any video signal out of it because it's looking for it um, from the AV side. So then once you have it selected to S video, you will see that there is a image and hey, there I am, hi, hi, how's it going? So there you go. Once you have that all set up, again, make sure you go into the menu and uh, turn off whatever um, system it has for automatically turning off after a certain amount of time of not using it. Just make sure that you push record on the converter rather than the camera itself and you're good to go. You pretty much got yourself a digital Canon GL1 or a digital uh, VHS camera. So that's a good way to do it. Now, it's not the best, uh, it's not the best source of uh, video in any means because you're not using any form of firewire and firewire is a digital source and s video and your av cables is actually analog s video yeah you do get a better image quality but it's not firewire quality so that is just something that you have to look out for i'm not sure what options there are out there that you can actually make it a digital uh way of doing it like through firewire i don't think there is any yet this is one of the best uh ways that i think is uh going about it depending on what camera you have you just got to play around with it and figure out uh, your, your cable situation and uh, figure out what works and what doesn't and uh, try to do it the, the cleanest way possible so this is kind of the uh, the blueprint for it and uh, you can kind of tweak it how you want for whatever camera you're using let's check out these clips okay you are now watching me on the Canon GL1 this is a uh, pretty much what the footage looks like coming out of the camera from S video. I should have added an extra light for you to see me a little bit better, but this is what it looks like. I tried messing with the white balance a little bit. I have to look at it when I uh, put it on my computer, but to me the footage looks a little green, so I might have to go in and adjust the, the colors on this guy a little bit. So yeah, this is what the Canon GL1 looks like uh, from a tapeless perspective. It looks the exact same um, if you were to record onto a tape, but I just figured I would show you. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you like it. And if you enjoy the content, make sure you subscribe because we're talking about old school camcorders on a weekly basis. And on that note, we'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.